Every day, the men launched their boats in the morning and pulled them back up at night. In the little fishing village of Old Harry, rubber boots were always in fashion and children were everywhere. Life was simple on the Magdalen Islands. But then one day, as if it were a carpet, the seafloor went up for sale. An exploration company based in Halifax, Corridor Resources, bought the rights to go prospecting for oil and gas. After blasting off seismic air guns and evacuating schools of fish, they found what they were looking for in the middle of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, a huge oil and gas field. Without any local consultation, they named their prospect Old Harry. Things looked promising for corridor resources. The Canada Newfoundland Petroleum Board granted them an exploration license. In 2005, to make drilling in Canadian waters even easier, the federal government ended community participation in oil and gas exploration. Debate was silenced and the concept of coexistence between the fishery and oil industry went unexamined. Jump forward to 2010, when an oil well deep in the Gulf of, Gulf of Mexico blows up. For three months now, black bile has spewed into the ocean. A billion dollar fishery has been significantly impacted and there isn't a local oyster to be found in New Orleans. Coastal communities stand in awe at the negligence resulting in hundreds of boats left tied to docks and livelihoods destroyed. While our Cajun cousins are suffering and the inland states bemoan the lack of ingredients for their favorite gumbos, further up the coast, people from the Gulf of St. Lawrence are still eating fried scallops, steamed mussels, clams, crab rolls, and lobster rice. While the CNN headline news may sound far away from Old Harry and the Maritimes, Marilyn and Megan don't think so. With drilling scheduled in the Gulf of St. Lawrence by 2012, we think it's time that the federal government commits itself to oceans and coastal communities. Implementing a moratorium on offshore drilling eliminates the risk of a Gulf Shore disaster here in the Maritimes. We want policies that prioritize renewable resources over oil and gas royalties. Why a moratorium? To review Canadian policy and practice before the exploration phase 2010-2012. To apply an integrated approach to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. To evaluate all the potential impacts and risks associated with oil and gas exploitation. To review and evaluate the technical and legal norms in place and to demand higher standards of practice. To make a collective decision about the future of our common resource and to decide whether or not to drill for fossil fuels in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Hi, my name is Marilyn Clark. I'm from the Magdalen Islands, uh, a village called Old Harry. Um, my family's been there for generations. Some of them shipwrecked there and have been fishing there ever since. So I'm the great granddaughter, granddaughter, daughter of a fisherman. I'm also the niece, sister, and maybe soon mother of a fisherman. Uh, I thought it was uh, important to talk about oil and, the ga and gas in the Gulf of St. Lawrence because it's, fishing is our livelihood and it will be affected by by oil and gas projects in the Gulf, there's a constant source of pollution, uh, which over time I'm sure would have impacts on our fishery and our way of life. Being just an individual against a powerful industry and oil companies, I wasn't sure what to do about oil and gas in the Gulf, so I thought I'd start to talking to people like myself, people from coastal communities, fishermen and fishermen's associations about the projects. What I could do was make people aware of the project so that collectively we could decide whether we wanted an industry or not in our Gulf. That brought me to tour the Gulf of St. Lawrence and meet uh, various fishermen's associations around the Gulf and to participate in the Coastal Zone Canada Conference. I also thought it would be important to participate in the youth conference because when you make decisions as to how to manage uh, natural resources, whether they're renewable or non-renewable, you have to think of future generations. As a mother, I can really identify with future generations now. Continuity is constantly in my mind. What will be there for my son is something I think about and it's something you should think about.